Hey, I'm Sophia. And I'm Sanjana. And we're, and we're the, the SS, SS Science. Science. Get ready to sail with us through, through a sea of scientific knowledge. Hi everyone. Today we're going to learn about heat transfer and freezing point depression by making ice cream. This is a fairly easy experiment, but as always, make sure you have parental supervision while you're doing it. Here's what you'll need. A tablespoon, teaspoon, and measuring cup. Sugar. Half and half or whole milk. Vanilla extract. Salt. One small sealable bag for example, a sandwich size Ziploc, a one gallon size sealable bag, four cups of ice cubes, and a small towel and a timer or a clock. And if you want, bring some things to add to your ice cream at the end, like chocolate chips. The first step is to put one tablespoon of sugar, one half cup of half and half, and one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract into the smaller Ziploc bag. Now you seal up the bag and refrigerate until you're ready to use it later on. The next thing to do is add four cups of ice cubes and one half cup of salt to the gallon size of the flock bag. After the ice is in, put the one half cup of salt in the bag. Now comes the part when we actually get to make ice cream. You're going to add the smaller Ziploc bag, the one with the milk in it, into the ice and seal that up. Now we have to shake the bag for about five minutes, but the bag can get really cold, so you want to make sure you wrap the bag with a towel. Make some observations. How did the ice feel when you added the salt? Did it feel colder or did it feel hotter? It should have felt colder. Ziplocs for about five minutes and now we're gonna see if any improvement was made and if the contents in the smaller Ziploc bag were able to solidify. So if you notice it actually it's pretty resistant to squeezing which means that it has turned into a solid pretty well so I think our ice cream making mission was a success. Now what you can do is you can eat it just like that or you can add chocolate chips, chocolate sauce, whatever you want. I'm going to add chocolate chips to mine and I hope yours tastes as good as ours did. All right, so let's taste test. That's actually pretty legit. <laughs> I'd make that again. <laughs> so that was really, really cool. But what exactly is a freezing point? That's a great question. So a freezing point is the temperature at which a liquid turns to a solid. So for example, something you probably know is that water turns to ice at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the important thing to think about when we're thinking about the science behind this experiment is freezing point depression. Freezing point depression occurs when you add a certain solute to a solvent. So for our experiment, we added salt to ice. Now the salt, when we added it to the ice, decreased the freezing point from 32 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit to about, for our purposes, let's say 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, but what is heat transfer? Heat transfer is the movement of heat from high to low temperature. So for example, if you think of holding an ice cube in your hand, the ice cube will start to melt. And when that happens, you know that the ice cube is getting warmer because the heat from your hand is being transferred into the ice. So the ice is warmer and your hand is colder. Okay, but how did we make ice cream? 
So in order to understand how we did that, we have to bring together the concepts of freezing point depression and heat transfer. So when we added the salt to the ice, the ice got, the ice's temperature went down a lot and its freezing point was depressed, so that came down, which means that the ice was a lot colder than the solution, the Ziploc that held our ice cream contents in it. So when that happened, the ice, which was colder, got heat from the Ziploc containing the ice cream contents, which was warmer. And because that happened so rapidly, the salt aided in that happening really quickly. The, the ice cream bag lost its heat content really quickly, which turned it into a solid and the ice cream that we eventually ate. Okay, but why is heat transfer important? So heat transfer occurs all around us all the time. The easiest way to think about this is in terms of water. So because of heat transfer, you have phase changes. So water turns to ice, ice turns to water. The water that has evaporated into the sky turns into rain droplets that come down. And all these types of phase changes happen because of heat transfer. Okay, but why are freezing points important? Well, without freezing points, no liquid would ever be able to turn into a solid. That means we have no snow, no ice, no popsicles, but most importantly, no ice cream. Oh, yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> Well, that was actually really interesting. Great. I hope you learned something, and I hope you did too. Thank you for voyaging with us on the SS Science. We hope you had fun learning.